down to square 6, l'université of the wrapped in Jamie Crochet Along. My name is Petra, also known as Peba Black Sheep, and I'm the designer of the cull and the host of the wrapped in Jamie Crochet Along. If this is your first square and you only found us and this is your, your first square, I would recommend to start with a different one like for example square three four or five five is probably the best to start with if you don't mind going in a different sequence um, because square six is a little bit trickier and I would love for you to be familiar with how I um, how I describe the stitches and how I place stitches first before you attempt this square. So if it's, if it's your first, please start with another one, um, unless you are really experienced and you, or you are very adventurous or you are curious, then by all means, then yeah, go for it and give it a go. But, but if you find that uh, um, this is all very confusing, yeah, start with another one and you'll be fine then. By the time you've done two or three squares, you'll be ready to do square six. Okay, so let's go start. So this is square six. L'Université uh, in, in France, reference to the Fleur de Lis and also the you know, university where Jamie is studying and learning languages and everything a layout needs to know. Okay, so let's get started. We start with a magic circle or magic ring. I like to just cross over, insert the hook, pull the yarn through, and then make a chain to close it. So some people like to start with a chain one in the magic ring. I just pull it really tight and then make the first loop a little bit bigger. So we start with a single crochet and two chains, chain two, into the magic ring. So, well of course only the single crochet go into the magic ring and then you make chain two. And we do this four times all together. So that's number three, and I will have to pull it a little bit tighter, otherwise I'm running out of the tail to work over. Single crochet and chain two. So now we pull the ring tightly. And slip stitch into the first single crochet that we made. So this concludes round one already. For round two, we chain one and single crochet, chain two, single crochet. This will always be our corner, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And I like to work over the end of the yarn, over the tail. And um, so I don't have to weave it in. So our first stitch does not go in, in round two. Our first stitch goes into the back loop only of the stitch. So front loop, back loop, in the back loop only. And then the corner again. Single crochet and always well, I'm always working over the tail, over the end. There we go. And almost there. This one. corner 
and the last single crochet in the back loop. Sometimes you might have may have to pull the single cro or the corner to the side to reveal the stitch underneath. So make sure you always find the first stitch after the corner because it likes to hide. So there we go. So that was our last stitch in the back loop only, our last single crochet in the back loop only. So now we have to find the top loops of the first single crochet. And if you look, these are the top loops. If you have difficulty finding them, you could mark the first single crochet with a stitch marker so you don't have to look because this can be deceiving. This is the chain one with which we went up into the next round and it's easy to think, oh, this is another stitch and you will have increased, but if you use that, you will have increases that we don't want and that we don't need. So we only need two increases per round, which will be done in the corner anyway, so you don't need that. So we slip stitch into the first stitch and that's round two. And we just continue with round three because it is only a round of single crochet. So in round three we have three single crochet. Again, make sure to find the first one. So the first is just after the corner, a middle stitch, and just before the corner. So it's just three stitches on this side. And, ah, oh, I can leave that. Okay. So that's the corner already. So you and I will continue this on the other three sides and then we'll be back together in round four. We do have a special stitch in round four and I highly recommend, recommend or would like to recommend even if you're using this video just to have a look at the website as well with the written pattern just to um, get, a, get, get an idea of the special stitches and everything. So we start with the corner, sorry, and we start with a single crochet after the corner, then a single crochet in the second stitch, and then we have our special stitch, which is a treble in the front loop of the stitch directly two rounds be below. This is our next stitch, so we go one, two rounds below, and there's the front loop that we made in round two. So we go in there and we just make a normal treble. And my patterns are all symmetrical so this is the middle of the side which means that once we've worked the first half the second half of the side will be the same stitches just in reverse order so we're going from from the corner to the middle and then we're going from the middle to the next corner in reverse order which means that we oh, first we skip the stitch behind because we have now worked a stitch in front if we would work into this stitch we would have additional increases which we don't want so we skip this all the stitches when behind when we make a a stitch in the front, like a, a treble or which, whichever stitch is that we make in the front loop or around another stitch, we skip the one behind. So of course so that it's a single crochet and then a single crochet in the back loop. Which means we're back in the corner and 
you should have seven stitches all together. So we have one corner stitch, one, two, three, four, five stitches, and another corner stitch. So between those chains, the chain twos from the corner, the corner space, we have seven stitches. Okay, do I see you when we both have finished the the other sides and then slip stitch into the first of the single crochets from the corner and then we will back for round five. Our round five starts with chain one and the single crochet chain two single crochet into the corner. And then again, see, it's almost automatically just make sure you find the first stitch after the corner. It likes really does like to hide. So we start with two single crochet. And then we have another special stitch called DC 1B 1B. When you see one of those special stitches, it means that the the first part of the stitch tells you what kind of stitch it is. The second part tells you how many stitches you go ahead or behind, so go forward or backwards. And then the third part of the special stitch tells you how many rounds you go below. In this case, it is a DC 1B 1B, which means from the next working stitch, from this one, we go backwards one stitch, and then we go down one round. So this is the front loop we made in round four. Very easy to find. In case you have difficulty finding front loops, you could use stitch markers and place them in those front loops as you go. It would look like this if you did that in the previous round. So that's what it would look like. I would like to encourage you to learn to see those front loop stitches. It will make your work so much easier. So there is one and there is one. Admittedly, the ones on the fourth side are sometimes a bit harder to find, especially if you're just working, uh, the, if the last stitch that you work in the back loop falls into a stitch just before the corner. Yeah, I, I get that. So maybe you want to mark this one. But the others, I, I would love for you to learn how to see them. Um, so we do a DC 1B 1B. So we established it goes into the front loop here. So just a normal DC. And again, because we worked the stitch in the front, we skip the one afterwards. And now it comes another special stitch. It's called a DC BB. That is a double crochet behind and below, which means because we're now here, we go behind the stitch and below. You see we have this little gap and you can find those two loops. These are the loops we work into with a DC. Just a normal double crochet. So those loops are from the stitch that were made two rounds below. This is the previous round, which, which is a treble. And then two rounds below, we made a normal single crochet. And we now work into this single crochet, DCBB, behind and below. So from here on, whenever you hear DCBB, that's what we do. We go behind and we go below. And it's two rounds below. So we are in the middle again, which means we work our stitches in reverse order. A DC 1A 1B. So that is the DC from this stitch, one ahead and I'm going to, oops, that was too much. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to count that. We skip this stitch, of course. This would be our next stitch. That is the one that we make 
one stitch ahead, one round below. Okay, this is how you count. So you, one A says one ahead, and one B after the one A says one round below. We skip this stitch. See, that's the one, and we single crochet in the last two stitches. If you're unsure whether you're skipping the correct amount of stitches, you can count backwards from the corner. So one, two, that is where you start. And that's a corner again. Okay, so we repeat on the other three sides. Slip stitch into the first single crochet of the corner in this round that we made and then we'll be together again for round six. So in round six we start with a corner and then a single crochet in the back loop only. Then two single crochet. Then we make a DCBB again. The double crochet behind and below the double crochet from the previous round. Make sure you find the right stitches. Double crochet. And now we do a chain three. Very important. This chain three is really important. Do not forget. <laughs> okay. And then another DC BB. And then we are already on the other half of the side, which means we go in reverse order, two single crochet and one single crochet in the back loop only. That's a very easy round again. And we repeat on the other three sides and meet again after you do the slip stitch into the first single crochet in round seven. is a round that has lots of special stitches. That's why I would like to show you a visual. And I also would love to ask you to please have a look at the written pattern because there is another kind of visual for this round as well. So we start with three single crochet. One, two, three single crochet. Then we have our first special stitch which is you can see that here it is a treble 1b 2b slash front post treble 1a 2b 2 together what that means is that from the next stitch after we've done the three single crochet we go one two stitches back and one round below there is the front loop that we made in where is it? Let me show you. Yeah, in the previous round. So this is the front loop here. The first the first stitch we made in round six. This is the one we work into with a treble. But we don't finish the treble we make another yarn over twice for the second leg of this two together stitch which will go behind the chain two and then around the DC 1B 1B from the previous round. Yeah, And because everything will be a bit scrambled, I would love to ask you to put a stitch marker 
in each of the tops of the DCBB that we made in round six, just um, on either side of the chain. So that will be easier to work in because the single crochet that we will make afterwards will be a bit harder to find. We have to make sure to stay behind the second leg in order to just continue with the work. So then the next stitch will be a treble 3B. Here it is. A front post treble 3B which means we go behind the chain and we make a front post treble around the treble from round four. Then again we will make a single crochet and then we have this other special stitch which is a mirror of this one. It's easy to see that it's just mirrored. So the first leg will be the front post part, the front post leg, and still working behind the chain. And the second leg will go in the front loop. One, two stitches ahead, one round below in the front loop in the last stitch that we made in the other round. So if you're left-handed, this will all be mirrored um, because I'm going to flip the, the video for the left-handed version, but I still hope that you can see, well, the schematics will be the same. I know that these numbers will be flipped. Okay, now, so let's get started with the round. We go slow and we go step by step. So first we start as usual with the corner. And then we start with three single crochet, which is simple and easy enough. Okay. Here comes the treble 2B, 1B, front post treble 1A, 2B, 2 together. So treble means we yarn over twice and we have established that we work into the front loop that we made one round below. So that's the first leg. That's easy and simple. Leaving two loops on the hook and now we yarn over twice again. We need to work behind the chain three here. So we go under uh, in the chain and you will have to grab this DC, pull it through a little bit and then work the treble part of this stitch behind and then just flip it back. Later on we will push and pull a, a little bit. Okay, So now this one comes in really handy because instead of working like that we need to remember we continue in our stitch run and we want this leg to be in the front later on which means we have to go behind the second leg we just made and grab the top loops I've, I have to take it out we grab the top loops of the stitch with the stitch marker. So the top loops of the DC from the previous round and we make a normal single crochet. It's not a single crochet behind, it just happens to be the next and it happens to have to be behind this leg but it's not a DC, uh, a single crochet behind as we do the DC behind. Yeah? It's just the next, the next single crochet. Now our next stitch is the treble 3B. So again we go behind, we come from back to front behind the chain 3, we grab the treble, pull it through a little bit so it's easier to work and make a normal treble. I'll make it a bit generous to have enough room. So then we go back. Our next stitch goes into the next stitch with a stitch marker, which is the top of the DC, just a normal single crochet. 
And now we go back again. So we have to yarn over twice for the next stitch for the treble part of the leg. We go behind the chain, grab the DC, pull it through a little bit. So this is this is tricky to sh trickier to show than it is to make later on. So let me grab the chain and pull it through. Can you see that? So now I'm behind the chain, but I've got my hook around the DC. And just make a normal treble. Go through two, go through two. Leave two loops on the hook for the second part of the uh, treble two together. And now we go forward into the front loop of the stitch, the last stitch we made in the previous round. Okay, that's it. And then we can pull and push wherever we need. We need to skip the stitch behind, which I would suggest it's easier to count from the corner. So let's just do that. We, our next stitch is a single crochet and we need to make three of them. So one, two, three. Alternatively, you could place a stitch marker in that as well. One, two, three. All right. So let's recap. In this round, it is important to place your stitches correctly. Three single crochet, and then we have this treble two together. And a 1B. We have the front loop in which we work into, and then we have the DC as the second leg around we, which we work, but we have to stay behind the chain three. Then we need to go back for the single crochet behind the second leg of the treble two together. Then we have a treble, a front post treble three B, three rounds below. Then another single crochet. Here it is hidden a little bit. And then again the treble two together with a first leg around the sorry, first leg around the DC and the second leg into the front loop from the previous round. So this is what it looks like. I would like to show you round seven on the fourth side again. So how you do the fourth side. So let's start with our three single crochet. And this one, I'm going to make it a bit faster because you had all the explanations. I just want to show you that it actually really looks more complicated than it is. You have to be careful with placing your stitches, but it's not that difficult, really. I've made the th first three single crochet, yarn over twice, insert the hook in the front loop from the previous round for the first leg of that special stitch, special treble stitch. Leave two loops on the hook, yarn over twice again, insert behind the chain around the DC, pull the DC through and make the second leg off a special stitch. So that's the special stitch done. Now we need to make the single crochet and we have to go behind the second leg into the top loops of the DCBB from the previous round. These are the top loops. 
and we'll make a single crochet. Our next stitch is the front post treble. Go behind the chain again, around the treble, pull the treble through, and make a normal treble. So that's already the first half done. Now our next stitch is a single crochet again into the top of the DCBB from the previous round. And now we go again around the DC. So yarn over twice, go behind the chain, grab the DC, you can use your fingers to pull it through behind the chain. It will be a bit tight but you manage. Yarn around and then go through two loops, go through two loops, leave the last two loops on the hook, yarn over twice again, and I've marked this front loop because it's the last before we close the round. Do I still have? No, lost one loop. Okay, and the second leg of the special stitch goes into the front loop, and now we go through all three loops. So that's this stitch done. Now I'm counting back. I have to skip one stitch. This is the first single crochet. This is the chain. One, two, three to go in here to start my three single crochet group. One, two, three. And then skip this chain one and close with a slip stitch. So that's all four sides done. Okay, I hope that helps. <laughs> So please do this on the other two sides now and then slip stitch into the first single crochet of the corner and then we continue with round 8. Before we start round 8, we are placing stitch markers in the 6th, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6th stitch from the corner, which is the single crochet we made, in the 8th, which is then another single crochet on either side of the front post treble and also oops there we go <laughs> and also in the 11th stitch so this is the 8th 9 10 11th so this is the 11th stitch which is the third from the opposite corner so i take a risk and leave them open and then we start our round eight with chain one, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and then three single crochet, one, two, three. Now in this round we have a few special stitches again which is, one of them is the DCBB and the other one is one stitch that is mirrored. But because it's mirrored, it looks like it's two different ones. But it's the same, it's just mirrored. So the first is a treble, 1B, 2B, slash front post treble, 1A, 2B, 2 together. What that means is that 
with the first part, with the first leg of the treble two together, we go into the same front loop as we did with our leg from the previous treble stitch. So you count from the current stitch, you count back, one behind, and then one, two rounds below. That's the same front loop as before. Then the second leg is a front post treble, 1A, 2B. That means we go from this one, one ahead and one, two rounds below, which is the same. It's this one. It's the second leg of the treble two together stitch we made. Okay, so let's, oops, I got tangled. So let's go and do that. We go into the front loop. Okay, let's try that again. Here we go. leave two loops on the hook. Now yarn over twice again and find that second leg and we go through that. Alrighty. So we have to skip the stitch behind and our next stitch is a DC BB, which is a DC behind the treble from the previous round. You see, when you come from, from the back, when you insert your hook from the back, just under all this gamosh, <laughs> then you can see those top loops peeking through. You just grab them. make a DC into those. Let's keep them out of the way. So that's the DC. Okay, so then the next stitch is a single crochet and this will be made into the stitch with the stitch marker. So we can take that one out. We don't need that one anymore. normal single crochet. Our next stitch is a stitch in the back loop only. And then another single crochet and that's the next stitch with a stitch marker. Take that one out too. Here we go. Right, so we we have made the middle part. Now it's time to do a DCBB. And here you can see it because we don't, don't have that. So it's easier for you to find the DC behind. Let's see, there it is. So let me just go through with a hook, grab those top loops. Here they are. <laughs> and lost them again. <laughs> Let's do this top loops and make a double crochet. So that's a double crochet behind and below that stitch we made in the previous round. And now we skip of course the stitch here in the front and we make that special stitch we made here just in the mirror version. You know, so we start with the front post treble part, so yarn over twice, insert the hook around the leg, the first leg we made here, leave two loops on the hook, yarn over twice again, and then we find the front loop, which is 
one stitch ahead and two rounds below. So that's again the same front loop into which we worked the second leg of the special stitch from the previous round. And we'll make the treble part the second leg and finish the stitch. Go through all three. Now with all the cladasia it's sometimes a bit trickier to find. This is why we place the stitch marker so we find the next stitch in which we need to work into, which is the third from the corner. And we'll make our last three single crochet. And the corner stitch. So, this is round eight. See those are the kind of leaves in the fleur de lis. And yeah, that's that's all that is to it to it. You just go around those legs, yeah, and that will we'll make it look like that. So rewind, repeat and meet me in round nine. With rounds 7 and 8 done, the worst is now behind you. So from here on, it's a breeze and a cruisy. We start round 9 with 4 single crochet. Double crochet behind and below the special stitch from the previous round the one we skipped. And one single crochet. Now we have a front post treble 1A, 2B. So from the current stitch we go one ahead and one two rounds below. So you can see it here. So this is the top of the treble the front post treble we made around this treble here. So from, fr from round 7. So we make a front post treble around that one. Then skip the stitch behind and a single crochet in the next. This single crochet is the mi in the middle. So it marks the middle of the side and should be directly above those front post trebles we have another front post treble. This time it's one behind, 1B, one 2B, be, one behind, two rounds below. So that's around the same front post treble that we made our previous stitch around. So and then we skip the stitch behind that, make one single crochet, and then again DC behind and below DCBB. So we go into the top loops of the stitch we skipped in the previous round and make a double crochet. And then we end the round or we end the side and later the round with four single crochet just like we started. And the corner. So, there you go. Quite easy for single crochet. DC behind, single crochet, front post treble, single crochet, front post treble, single crochet, DC behind, four single crochet. Uh, and it's time for a a stitch count check. You should have 17 stitches on each side and that includes the corner stitches on each side. Now just check that you've got that and then you're good to go for round 10 when you've done that on all 
four sides altogether. So I'll see you then in round 10. Round 10 is again an easy peasy round. We only have one special stitch in there. And we start it with seven single crochet. So that's a lot done already. Now we make a double crochet behind the front post treble from the previous round. So we find those top loops of the stitch we skipped and we'll make a double crochet into those top loops. Now you see I've marked a front loop with a stitch marker because it's a little bit hidden, you can see that on this side. But still it can be seen and I want to show you either option. So either you mark your stitches in round 8 or from, from round 8 because we're in round 10 now with a stitch marker. That will be the stitch that is two rounds below the single crochet between those two front post travels. So we go one and two, and you see it peeking through here. That's the front loop. And to make it easier to find, you can put a stitch marker in that. Because our next stitch is a treble 2B. Um, usually our special stitches have three parts, but this one has only two, which means that there is nowhere to go ahead or behind. We only go below and the stitch is two rounds below, so yarn over twice and directly two rounds below, one, two, is that front loop in which we make this treble. It goes between those trebles we made, those front post trebles from the previous round. Okay, so we skip the stitch behind our next stitch is again a DC behind and below into those top loops of the stitch we skipped in the previous round. And well, that's it almost already. We just have to do the last seven single crochet on this side. And then we're almost there. the first of the corner and that is round 10. I told you it would be easy peasy. So yeah, 7 single crochet, DCBB, treble 2B, DCBB, 7 single crochet. That's it. Okay, repeat on the other sides. Slip stitch into the first single crochet of this round and check your stitch count. You should have 19 stitches on each side, including those two from the corner. And that's it for round 10. I see you in round 11. As promised, round 11 is equally easy as round 10. We just have more single crochets in the beginning, namely 8. So we start with them. Make sure to find the first single crochet after the corner. They do like to hide. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So from here, we make a front post half treble, so yarn over twice, and we go around the stitch 
that is directly two runs below. So in the previous run we made the DC, DCBB, and two runs below we made this front post 1A, 2B. And around this one we make a front post half treble. So go through all three loops in the end. And then we have a DC, BB, a double crochet behind and below this middle stitch here. Just making sure to find the right top loops to work into. And again the front post half treble to B, directly two rounds below. That is the next front post treble. So in the first and then in the second. And now we have to make sure we skip the round amount of stitches and the right stitches. So we have to skip this one and we have to skip this one. And from here we start our group of eight single crochet again. And I told you it would be easy peasy and yeah, round 11 is then almost done. You can double check your stitch count again, which should be 21 stitches on each side. Let me double check if I went into the right, right, right one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 plus the corner, so that's correct. So 8 stitches then the front post half treble, DC behind, front post half treble, 8 stitches. Yep, that's it. Just repeat on the other sides and we meet again in round 12. In round 12, we are, we are finishing off the fleur de lis, and it will be our last round with a special stitch. But first, we start with nine single crochet. Well, it will. It won't be the last special stitch, but the last in this inner part of the inner square. You know that we have the inner, most inner square and then we have that inner border and then we have, if you choose to do that, the border around the whole square, which is always the same, while this inner border changes with each square. I made nine single crochet and we have a double crochet behind and below the front post half treble from the previous round, this one. Our next stitch is that special stitch in round 12, which is a front post DC 1BA, 1B2 together. So it sounds very complicated and very long. All it means is that we make two DCs together, of which the first go first leg goes around this front post half treble and the second leg goes around this front post half treble. Because this is our current stitch we have to first go one stitch behind and one round below. Then we have to go one stitch ahead and one round below. That's all it means. Yeah, The BA stands for first leg goes behind, second leg goes ahead and then both legs are made in the stitches one round below or in this case around the stitches one round below. So yarn over once, insert the hook around the first leg, almost finish the DC, leave two loops on the hook, yarn over once again around the second leg and then finish go by going through all three loops. So you see we finished this front post DC2 together and our next stitch is a stitch behind 
in the top loops of the stitch that we skipped. So we made a DC BB before this DC2 together. Oops. Before this DC2 together, and we will make one afterwards as well. And then we skip the next. The, well, we skip the stitch in front, and we continue with nine single crochet. And that's really all there is to this side, to this round. All you have to do is repeat it all the way around. And here we are in the corner. So let me double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plus the corner. So that's correct. All you have to do is single crochet, DC behind, this DC two together, another DC behind, and nine single crochet. So your stitch count would be 23 stitches, including those two corner stitches on either side. Yeah, so just go around, repeat on the other three sides, and then slip stitch into the first single crochet, and we'll be together again in round 13. Round 13 is the easiest, peasiest round in the whole square, I think. But you might want to be aware that round 14 is a round where we single crochet in the third loop. It is all explained, this is the third loop, and it can be a little bit hard to get into that. So it, all the alternatives are explained in the stitch collection which has been totally renewed and updated and is now called the Outlandish Stitch Compendium. So if you have not already, which you probably won't because I will just be releasing it, so <laughs> but if you haven't already downloaded it, please do so now and have a look at it. There are tips for round 13-14 which are the same for round 1920 and also for the last border round 2930. If you find it difficult to single crochet into the third loop in the next round, an alternative here would be to make round 13 either with a bigger hook or round 14 with a smaller hook or instead of making single crochet across, uh, and by the way it's 23, and then you have the two corner stitches, so your stitch count in the end will be 25, but 23 single crochet here. Instead of making single crochet, you could make HDCs. If you choose that option, you should have done so with the other squares as well, because it may alter your square height. Another idea is to make this round single crochet and make round 14 then as back post single crochet. That will give you the same effect as, almost the same effect as crocheting into the third loops. And I will show you how to, how to do that. I'm going to make single crochet around and then we meet in round 14 again. So slip stitch at the end into the first single crochet and then your round 13 will be done. But yeah, have a look at the compendium and make your decision how you want to make round 13 before before you get into it. Bigger hook, smaller hook for the next round, um, single crochet across just normal or HDCs in this round. Okay, so I see you back in a moment. We are in round 14, which is dreaded by many. Yeah, so I have chosen 
to make the option to have those single crochet in round 13 very loose and I'm attempting to make the single crochets in the third loop. I'm just finding the third loop and as I said it's all explained in the compendium so that should not be a problem at all and all you have to do is choose the option that speaks most to you. So if you want to make a, a, and stick with one, so I started with the third loops. If I would change to making back post single crochet now, which I just want to show you for demonstration purposes, then you would see not only the change, but you see how they are a little bit different. So the third loop, you have both loops here in the front and there is the just the normal stitch visible here. If you do the back posts, you will see that it warps or it twists or yeah changes how the stitches lay there. So this is why you have to be careful if you make the back post single crochet then it will change your your size, the size of your square compared to doing the third loops. So maybe that's when the HDC in round 13 comes in handy because it might just bring it back to the normal size. So yeah, so choose one, stick with it and work it around on all four sides. Slip stitch of course in the first single crochet of the corner and then we will be back together in round 15. Round 15 looks a little bit complicated because it has repeats within repeats. So if you look at the written instruction you may think it's very confusing but I have added a visual just to show you what it really looks like. So we start with three single crochet, which is the first part of the bigger repeat. And then we have a small repeat, which is single crochet in back loop, single crochet. So that's the small repeat and we do that twice. Single crochet in back loop, single crochet. So that's the small repeat done. And then we have another single crochet oh, sorry, in the back loop and that is now the big repeat done. So three single crochet, back loop, single, back loop, single, back loop. That's the big repeat. And we do that three times. So again three single crochet back loop, both loops, back loop, both loops, and back loop. And one more time, three single crochet, and then back loop, both loops, back loop, both loops and one more back loop and then we have three single crochet left and we have just normal sing single crochet into those stitches and we are in the corner. So have a look at, uh, at the visual in the written pattern and repeat that all the way around round 15 easy peasy you got that Okay, see you in round 16. Round 16 is similar to round 15 in that, that we have a small repeat within a bigger repeat. And it's 
almost exactly the same as the one we had in round 15, except that we start with one single crochet first. And then our big repeat starts with three single crochet. Then a DC 1B, which means we make a double crochet into the front loop of the stitch directly one round below. So that's the front loop. And then one single crochet. We skip the stitch behind the DC and make one single crochet. And then we repeat this whole thing, the small part, the small repeat, DC and a single crochet and then one more DC. So see that's that was the small repeat and we're including the first not the not the first one but three single crochets that is the bigger repeat so we just repeat all of that again. So three single crochet the DC one B directly below neither forward nor backwards neither ahead nor behind so a single crochet DC single crochet and one more DC. And again, three single crochet, a DC, one B in the front loop, one stitch below, double crochet, a single crochet, double crochet again, single crochet and the last double crochet in the front loop one round below and we're left with four single crochet one two three and four well that's it there is also a visual for this in the written pattern so if you want, have a look and repeat on the other sides. And we are together again in round 17. Round 17 again is very easy. We only have a few basic stitches which we are going to use to bring the pattern forward and to clean a few things up. So we start with three single crochet, two and three, and then we start a big repeat. The big repeat starts with another single crochet, then a single crochet in the back loop only. And then we have a small repeat, which is a double crochet behind and below. So DCBB and then a single crochet. We do that twice. So double crochet. Oops, let me get both. Here we are. Behind and below and single crochet. And then we have, so that's the small repeat. We had that twice. And then we have another double crochet behind and below. And now we have a single crochet in the back loop only. And this concludes the the big repeat. So we now start the big repeat again. 
single crochet, single crochet in the back loop, small repeat, DCBB, single crochet, DCBB, single crochet, small repeat done, and another DCBB. And then we single crochet in the back loop only, and that will be our second repeat, our second big repeat done. We start it one more time, single crochet, back loop only, DCBB, single crochet, DCBB, single crochet, DCBB, back loop only, and we finish, so that's the third time we did this repeat, and we finish with four single crochet. Two, three, and four. And we're back in the corner. So I see nothing really difficult. It's just the way the pattern is written is so that we don't have, you know, everything written out. Single crochet, DCBB, single crochet, DCBB. it would be quite challenging to read that pattern that way. So we have the small repeat and the big repeat. So do that on all three sides. Slip stitch into the first single crochet of the corner and I will do the same and meet you in round 18. We are starting round 18 after the corner and making sure you find the first stitch with 8 single crochet. So your 8th single crochet should fall in one of those single crochet stitches and just before the stitch in the middle of this group, of this 3 group, 3DC group. And what we're doing is a treble 3BA, 1B2 together. So yarn over twice. 3BA means both legs are symmetrical and first they go behind three stitches and then they go ahead three stitches. So from here we go behind one, two, three ahead, three behind and one below. See there is the front loop we made just beside that DC here. So we go into that and almost finish the treble leave two loops on the hook, yarn over twice again and now again from here we go three ahead one, two, three and one round below that's again the front loop beside the DC and now we finish our treble we skip this middle treble here and start with a single crochet group of seven single crochets. And that is our repeat, the treble and then three and then seven single crochet. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, and one more. Oh yeah, of course, in the single crochet. So again, the treble, three behind and one below into the front loop. Lift two loops on the hook, yarn over again twice, second leg, and the front loop, three ahead, one round below, and then together. Skip this stitch behind here, and another sing seven single crochet. And again, yarn over twice, find the front loop, and if you have trouble finding those front loops, just use a stitch marker or train your eyes to find the front loops. <laughs> Skip the stitch here. And from here, from the next, it will be eight single crochet towards the corner. And a corner. So, you've got those roofs, this is l'université, and these are the three roofs up above the building. Okay, so do this all the way around, single crochet, slip stitch in the first single crochet that we made into the corner, and we will be back for round 19. If you choose to do the square border, the larger border, that is the same for all squares, then round 19 will be your last round. You should also consider the same thoughts that we did in round 13. So if you want to use HDCs, then instead of making single crochet, where I'm making single crochet, you would be making HDCs. Or you, as, as I said, use a bigger hook for round 19, use a smaller hook for round 20, or try to make the single crochet here really loose, so you can get into the third loop if that's what you want to do. But have another look at the, at the hints and tips in the Outlandish Stitch Compendium. So we start the round with nine single crochet. I'm also trying to make them very loose. So I can do the next round easier or more easily. So in, your, in the ninth of those single crochet should bring you just before the um, front, the treble two together. And now we make simply a front post single crochet. That's all. Yeah. And then we have seven single crochet again. And then we're at the next roof. And again, just a front post single crochet. And we do it one more time. And 
seven single crochet oh, and uh, front post single crochet. Make sure you find the first after the front post. So you should be ending with nine single crochet. The pattern will say seven single crochet again and plus the two at the end is nine then. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I was in the correct stitch. And we are in the corner. So if you continue with the border, as I said, then this will be the last round for the inner square and you should be swapping to the border pattern which is available as left and right handed video as well as a free pattern page on the website. If you don't want to do the border and just keep this inner part of the square, your round 20 will be the same as round 14. So in, in case you want to do that, then just repeat round 14. Make sure that in round 19 you have 37 stitches all together on each side and you will have 39 stitches in round 20. So in round 20 that means that you will have 37 stitches between the corners. Sometimes at the end the stitches, the third loops may be a little bit more difficult to find. So just make sure that you have the, the correct stitch count and then after this your square will be finished. Just go around and slip stitch into the first stitch of the corner and either I will see you at the border or you will do round 20 by your own. But again, yeah, thank you so much for joining me in this Wrapped in Jamie Carly would not be the same without you. So I'm very grateful that you are with me on this journey and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. You should get automatically notified if I upload a new video and you yeah, have a look at the website for the free pattern page and if you want an ad free version you can download that in the shop as well and I look forward to seeing you with or for the next square so enjoy bye